We have learned that net impulse on an object or a system is equal to the change in momentum of the object or the system. There is a special scenario. If the net impulse is zero, then the change in momentum will be zero or the momentum will be a constant. If we pick any two time points and call them initial point and final point, then the momentum at these two points will be equal. And we can use equation PI equals PF to represent this constant momentum. And if a group of objects are considered, then the total momentum of the system will be constant. The cause of a zero impulse is usually due to the zero net force. All forces canceled or no force at all. If a system experiences no external force, it is called an isolated system. The universe is a typical example of an isolated system because we believe that there is nothing beyond the universe and there should be no force on this universe. It should be emphasized that there are still forces going on inside the system, which are called internal forces, but the internal forces will not affect the law of conservation of momentum due to Newton's third law. In our daily life, there are many systems that can be nearly called the isolated systems, and therefore, they will obey the law of conservation of momentum. Collision is a typical example in which this law is obeyed. There are two types of collisions. Both will obey the law of conservation of momentum. The first type is called elastic collision. In an elastic collision, not only is the law of conservation of momentum obeyed, but also the conservation of mechanical energy is also obeyed. In this section, let us discuss the elastic collision in one dimension, which means that the velocities of both objects are always in one line. Let us calculate the velocities of two objects in an elastic collision. In this problem, we are given the two objects in terms of their masses and their initial velocities. So M1 equals 0 0.500 kilograms, M2 equals 3.5 kilograms and uh, V1 is equal to 4.0 meters per second and V2 equals zero. So V1, V2, both are initial velocities of these two objects. We are looking for the velocity after the collision. So first, what is the concept? Well, clearly this is about an elastic collision. So let's write here. Elastic collation of two objects in one dimension. So we can write equation clearly right now by saying we have two objects, so we can say P1i equals P2i. P1i plus P2i equals P1f plus P2f. All right, so what are the desired quantity? Is it momentum? No, it's about velocity. After collision, so which is final velocities. And in this case, we can write P out as M1 V1F 
and 2, B2F. So we are looking for B1F and B2F. Now, do we know other quantities? Yes, we know M1 is 0.5. We know M2 is 3.5. We also know that P1I is 0.5 times 4. We know P2I is 3.50 times 0. But we know that mathematically, one equation with two unknown variables is not solvable. We need another equation to help us combine these two equations and solve both variables. So we need another equation. So where is another equation? Well, because this is a last equation, so it must obey another law of conservation, which is called the law of conservation of mechanical energy. But usually collision happens at a very specific point that gravitational potential energy of both objects will not change. So the law of conservation of mechanical energy usually is only about law of conservation of kinetic energy. Ke1i plus Ke2i equals Ke1f plus Ke2f. Now, Ke is equal to one half m times velocity squared. So, in this equation, we also have two variables unknown, which is here one half m1 v1f squared and one half m2 v2f squared. So these two variables are unknown, but we know m1, m2. They are 0.5 and 3.5. We also know that initial, we have 1 half, 1 five, 4 squared, and 1 half, 3.5 times 0 squared. So anyway, we have two equations and two unknown variables Mathematically, we should be able to solve this, but the question is how? Usually, we can do the substitution of variables. So, for example, in the first equation, we know that it is 0.5 times 4, which is 2, plus 0 equals 0.5 V1F plus 3.5 V2F. We can express V1F in terms of V2F, which we can say this, V1F is actually equal to 4 minus 7 V2F. And then we can plug V1F into the second equation, which now becomes this. 4 plus 0. 4 is coming from here, and 0 is from here equals 0 0.25, which is half times 0 0.5. Now, V1F becomes 4 minus 7 V2F, so we can replace that. 4 minus 7 V2F squared, and then plus another term with V2F, which is 1.75 V2F squared. Now, let's focus on this equation. This equation will help us solve for V2F, and then we can plug V2F back into this equation for V1F. That's our strategy. So, this equation right here can be simplified as 4 equals 0 0.25 times inside if you expand this square of two terms is going to be 16 minus 56 v2f plus 49 v2f square and then outside you have another term which is 1.75 v2f square so you combine all terms um, with square and all linear term and then all constant, you have basically zero on the left, you have 
negative 14 v to f plus 14 v to f squared. And the right hand side can be factored out. You can factor out v to f and you have 14 v to f minus 14. And this means that v to f has two possible roots. It's either zero or it's one. This tells us v to f can be zero. And this tells us v to f can be one meters per second. But if v to f equals a zero or one, we can solve for v one f. If v v to f is zero, then we uh, v one f is going to be four because four minus seven times zero is four. All right. If v to f is one, then v one f is going to be negative three meters per second. So there are two possible solutions. One is the final velocity of v1, v2 would be 0 and 4. And the other one is 1 and negative 3. Can both be possible? No way, because we know that this actually is what velocities are before collision. So if velocity are the same, are exactly the same before and after collision, then the collision doesn't happen. So that's why this should not be physically possible. And that's why we ignore that, we drop it, and the answer should be this. So V1F is negative 3 and V2F is 1. Now again, negative means it is opposite to the initial velocity. Now, let's take a look at another example of elastic collision. So here we have two balls, again, equal mass, undergo a perfectly elastic collision, head-on collision, which means it is same direction, same, same, same line, or one-dimensional. If one ball's initial speed was 2 meters per second and the other one was 3.6 meters per second in the opposite direction, what will be their speeds and directions after collision? So we can start this problem solving like we did to the earlier problem. We can first write elastic collision of two objects in one dimension. And we can write one P1F, P1I plus P2I equals P1F plus P2F. And because it is a perfectly elastic collision, so we can write another equation, which is KE1I plus KE2I equals KE. 1f plus ke2f. Now, we are looking for the final speed. So they are basically inside p1f, p2f, ke1f, and ke2f. So we can rewrite these two equations by using mass and velocity that we know. Now, if we don't know, we can use v1f, v2f. So anyway, because these two balls have the same mass, so we can use the same quantity, m. We, even we don't know what m is, but we can use m as a symbol of mass. So here we have P1i, which is going to be m times 2, and P2i is going to be m times negative 3.0. And then this is equal to m times V1f plus m times V2f. Again, you can see we can express V1F in terms of V2F. This is called the substitution of variables. So V1F is going to be equal to negative 1.60 minus V2F. 
But first, you can cancel M because M is in every single term. So you can, if you divide both sides by M, M is gone. So even mass is not given, but it doesn't matter. And then we can write the second equation, which is going to be one half M times two square plus one half M times negative 3.0, 3.60 square equals one half M V one F square plus one half M V two F square. Now again, we can cancel one half M in this equation by dividing that on both sides. So that becomes four left plus actually 12.96 equals V1F squared. Now V1F is equal to this, so we can replace that. Negative 1.60 minus V2F and square plus V2F squared. So if we reorganize this equation, all right, you can do that on your own, but it's not hard. I'm going to write this equation after reorganization. It becomes V2F squared plus 1.6 V2F minus 7.2 equals 0. Now, this is a typical quadratic equation. So, a quadratic equation can be solved by using quadratic formula, which means that V2F is equal to minus 1.6 plus or minus square root of 1.6 square minus 4 times 1 right here, this 1 right here, and times negative 7.2. So times negative 7.2 divided by 2. So V2F, if you solve, can be either 2 or negative 3.6. Now, if V2F is 2 or negative 3.6, then V1F is going to be negative 3.6 or 2. If you plug V2F back into here, you can solve V1F. So also, uh, there are two possible roots. So which one or can, be, can both be correct? No way, because we know that before collision, V1 is 2 and V2 is negative 3, 6. So that is this. This is the speed of both objects before collision. Now, if we solve the same speed after collision, that means the collision doesn't have any impact on the balls. So it's not possible. Therefore, this should be dropped. And that's why the answer should be this. And you can see that the speed are just switched. And just switch. Actually, this is one typical property of a elastic collision between two identical balls. They just switch their speed.